<laughs> all right. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for having me here. I'm excited to tell you all about the bots that we have over in CPython. The bots have greatly improved our workflow, and I wanted to share this to give you ideas of the things that we are automating, and perhaps you'll be inspired and want to have the same kind of bots for your own project. My name is Marietta. I live in Vancouver, Canada, and you can find me on Twitter as GitHub as Twitter and GitHub as Marietta. I'm a, a staff software engineer at Uplight. In my free time, I contribute to and maintain open source projects. I'm one of the Python core developers, which means I'm a maintainer of one of the most popular programming language out there. Python is a big project. We have various maintainers focusing on different areas. And for myself, I'm known as the core workflow expert and the emoji expert. I, I care about contributor experience and documentation. What is core workflow? It's a special interest group within our project where we discuss the topic of development workflow, the tools, the infrastructure that supports our workflow. It's kind of the DevOps things. Um, we discuss things related to our issue tracker, the build bots, how we triage issues, the general contributor experience, and we have specific mailing lists, repository, and discourse forum just for the core workflow. One of the things that we look after in the core workflow team is our GitHub bots. So let me introduce you to them. Each of these bots have very specific purpose. Each of these bots were developed to solve specific things. And by the way, all of these were developed before the existence of GitHub Actions. So as I talk about them today, I will also share some of our issues with them and what's our plan on moving them into GitHub Actions or something else. And if you're wondering on the naming convention for these bots, they're basically characters from the movie Monty Python and the Holy Grail. And each of them has their own unique Easter eggs. And I'll be giving some hints to those Easter eggs throughout my slides. The first bot we ever created is called the Knights Who Say Me. It was created because we needed a way to check whether the contributor has signed the contributor license agreement, the CLA. It would receive the webhook events, the pull request open and reopen events. It would figure out who contributed to this PR, and then it would go and check in the database whether this person has signed the CLA. Based on the result, the bot would then apply the label to the PR. And that's how it works, and that's how it was designed initially. It's the problem with this design. What if the contributor did not sign the CLA at the time the PR was opened? first time contributors, they did not realize that a CLA would be needed. They created a PR and was scolded by the bot. If the contributor signed the CLA after the fact like that, there is no mechanism that would automatically update their contributor's PR with this new status. There is no webhook from the CLA database server. It has no way of updating the PR with the new label. We kind of have to tell the new contributor, say, hey, please wait a couple of days and then please close and reopen your PR. It's not a great experience. And we also got tired of telling contributors to please reopen your PR. So instead, we built yet another web app. Now, instead of telling them, hey, please reopen your PR, now we're telling them to, hey, please go to this other site, check the status, of your CLA, and then that app is able to update the contributor's PR with the right label. It's complicated. Um, and part of this is due to the fact that the server that hosts the current CLA records is kind of a legacy system. We're hesitant to make changes to it, so we have to work around it. We've recognized that this whole CLA checking thing is just not great. So I've opened up an issue and discussed this with the rest of Python core developers to explain like what's the problem here and how it can all be made better. At the moment, this is not yet fully solved. We've identified the problem, have not implemented the solution due to lack of dedicated time for it. Um, however, the folks at HDB, they're aware of this. They've been working on implementing a new GitHub app based on our needs. And last I heard is that they have something ready for testing and currently working with our infrastructure team, the PSF infrastructure team, to get a test environment set up. When I say infrastructure team, it's really a team of one person, by the way. The second bot we have is called 
Bedivere, which is named after Sir Bedivere, who knows how to identify the witch. Bedivere is part of RCI. In Python, we're kind of picky when it comes to accepting pull requests. Simply having all the unit tests to pass is not enough for it to be merged. Not only we need the CLA to be signed, we need the PR to have corresponding issue numbers. It needs a news entry file. So instead of us telling the contributor, hey, please include all of these things, we made the bot does all of this for us. The other capability of this bot is automatically closing invalid pull requests. From time to time, we would have folks who would try to merge one of our maintenance branches to the main branch, which should never happen. And additionally, like this is not even a branch in their own fork. It's not even their work. Yet somehow they are able to create such a PR. And when something like this happens, a whole bunch of code owners are getting notified unnecessarily for something that is invalid. This happens enough times that we got fed up. We write the bot to automatically close this kind of PR and the bot also helps remove those unnecessarily review requests. I've mentioned that we'll about our PRs. We're, we're a busy project. We have lots of contributors, lots of maintainers, lots of reviewers. We needed a better way to categorize our PRs based on the different stages they're in. We didn't find the GitHub interface to be sufficient for our scale. It's fine for some of the smaller projects we have, just not for CPython. So we made a bot that react based on the various webhook events that we receive and we utilize all of those events and we apply different kind of labels to the PR based on the stages of the PR. While it sounds, might sound complicated, the underlying mechanism isn't really too difficult. But a the bot simply receives webhook events and it acts based on those events. It applies labels, it posts status, it closes the PR. It doesn't need an external database or anything. It receives an event and it does something. With the introduction of GitHub Actions, we started thinking that all of this can definitely be done by Actions instead of having to host our own web service. We haven't done it yet. Again, lack of people and time. The third bot we have is called Miss Islington, aka The Witch. She's not a witch. Um, in, during Halloween, I would change her name to like Miss Skeleton instead of Miss Islington, just for fun. It was created because we needed a way to automatically backport pull requests from the main branch to the maintenance branches. Here's the example illustration that I, I like to use just to show like how valuable this automation has been for us, the maintainers. This is a pull request in the CPython repository. This is activities from one pull request. On the left, that's Yuri, who is a core developer. On the right is the activities of Miss Islington, the bot. And you can see that in just one pull request, there's less work that we have to do. We apply labels, we review and approve the pull request, all the important things. Meanwhile, the bot is doing all the, it's doing more work, but all the chores um, from saying thanks it does the git cherry pick, it creates the pull request, it waits for all the CI to complete and pass and then automatically merge the pull request and delete the branch. I know that GitHub now has the ability to perform auto merging. However, we are not currently using it yet. Um, again, we're, we're picky, it's not enough the tests are passing. We need things like CLA signs and whether it's been approved by another maintainer. Additionally, we have to guard against those invalid PRs. Sometimes also, the, sometimes the maintainer created a PR that they do not want to be included yet. Maybe not in the, the upcoming release. Maybe they're still waiting for the test. Maybe it's just a proof of concept. Maybe they're waiting for the release after that. Um, and that's why we have the do not merge label. We've made our bot to understand these rules based on our preferences and that's that's one of the reasons we are not yet using the built-in auto merging feature on github and i think perhaps what we need to do is to convert all of these labels into actual status checks so it's not just labels we just haven't had a chance to look into doing those 
at this point, we're not yet thinking of moving Miss East LinkedIn into GitHub Actions. I think it's actually possible. It's just a little more complicated system than, than Bedevere. So perhaps we'll, we'll focus on moving Bedevere into Actions first, and then perhaps after that, we'll see whether it makes sense to move Miss East LinkedIn into Actions. So I do hope you're inspired by all our bots. I hope you'll think about your project's workflow and I'm sharing some of the links here so that you can learn more about our project and our workflow. Uh, I'm curious to hear from other project maintainers whether you have a specific core workflow or DevOps team or maybe you have a different name for this in your project. Like I'd like to hear how it works on your project. If you're interested to learn on how we build these bots, what's, what's the tech stack for this, we are using Python. All the bots were built using um, AIO HTTP, which is async Python web framework. And on top of those, we, we use GitHub library. Um, GitHub has the mechanism for calling GitHub APIs. It's able to receive webhook events from GitHub and thus does all the validation needed to ensure that the webhook events is indeed from GitHub. And I've written a tutorial on how to build GitHub apps and bots using GitHub, GitHub library. The link is there, so check that out. So thank you so much for listening to my talk. If you'd like to get in touch, you can find me on Twitter as Marietta. If you rely on Python in your day-to-day -day work, I suggest you to sponsor Python on GitHub. You can also sponsor me on GitHub. My sponsors help keep me motivated into continuing doing what I do. So I'm grateful for those who are already sponsoring me from GitHub. So thank you so much. Thank you, Mariana. Thank you.